What's up guys, Zane here, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be going into the Palace of the Dead and showing you guys how it works. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to be going in as my uh, pugilist. Into the Palace of the Dead, select the slot you want to use. Going in as a match party because I don't have anybody to go with. And now we wait for the duty finder. So guys, I will be back when the duty finder pops. Alright, so uh, the queue pops, so let's go into Palace of the Dead. Alright, so when going into the Palace of the Dead, you are automatically reset to level 1. But you, you're going to level up insanely fast. So, don't worry about that. Um, when you level up past the level you are out in the open world, um, it will reset back to your, your the um, I, uh, the uh, level that you uh, you are outside. So don't think, oh, I'm past level 23, which was in the outside world. Uh, you don't automatically um, go. You know, your, your level goes back to the what you were in the outside. So don't think you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna be level 20. I'm level 30 when I leave the dungeon. So here you're automatically level one. As you can see on the party, we don't have a tank, so it's, it basically shows you that you can come in here at, with any kind of um, party kind of, um, any kind of party setup. So these gold chests are gonna hold palmanders. The silver ones, of course, give you the uh, increase in your armor or arms, and the bronze ones will give you items. So as you can see here, I'm already level three. Uh, the experience is insanely fast. You level up insanely quick. So. So when you do level floors 1 to 50, you will not uh, exceed level, uh, level 50. So basically what, you're, what the, the whole thing is, you have to kill as many enemies as possible until this little key icon lights up. That key icon means you can go to the next floor, which is this little transfer um, transfer uh, structure that's over here. Stand in it, after two seconds, it will send you to the next floor. Now the little uh, leaf icon is the, uh, the structure that will automatically raise anybody who is uh, incapacitated. So if you don't, if you're not a healer, um, you use the, the uh, you use that to bring everyone back to life. So when you exceed the level that you came in at, you came in as, um, you automatically will unlock. The, abil the uh, abilities so since I was like level 23 if I go to level 26 armor destroyer will be unlocked but it will be relocked when I get outside because I wasn't level 26 to begin with so you miss pretty much will unlock all your abilities so feel free to try them out when you're in here so as you can see here, you go to character information and you're able to see the pommanders. Here we are, we have a pommander of safety, which removes all traps on the floor. Pommander of steel, which increases your uh, damage, decreases damage received by 40%. And the pommander of lust, which turns into a succubus. <coughs> and we have another pommander of steel. So. Uh, if, you, if you did notice, we opened a, uh, a silver chest, which gave us an increase in our arm or armor. I forgot which one it was, but as you can see, it, it showed a, a little um, a message that says it flared, which means that you uh, see. I got a plus. That's a plus three. If you get a flare, that's pretty much a plus three, and whatever um, whatever it gave you. So I got. A plus three in my armor, in my arm. But don't expect to get a plus three. You'll most likely get plus ones or so. 
All right. As you can see here, we got a um, the fuel port arm flickers. That's that's pretty much equivalent to one. So my now my arm is at level is plus four. The higher it the higher it is, uh, the more damage you do. The higher it is the higher it is on your um, armor, the less damage you take. Now some enemies might drop items as well. So keep that in mind. And you only can have up to three palm manners at a time. If you have more than three, you will not be able to get them out of the chest. So it's probably best to use one. If you, uh, I already have three. Now if you are attacked while this is unlocked, it will automatically um, stop working until you defeat the uh, enemy that you have aggroed. The more time you spend on the floor, enemies will eventually uh, respawn. Also, I want to note that the mobs do not have a flank, a rear, or a front. So basically, go ham on your positionals. <laughs> no matter where you are, your positionals will always tr will always proc whatever. So like heavy thrust will always proc for ring of thorns um, and for mods your monks as well they also will proc so don't um, worry about getting in position also the music is also randomized so <laughs> there's no set music for palace of the dead so right now we're on fourth uh, the fourth floor So there's a silver chest in the next room, so hopefully we get something good. Alright, our armor flickers, so now it's, uh, it's gained a uh, point. Sometimes you will kind of like find NPCs that died during the main story or so or not in Palace of the Dead. Leveled up again. So as you can see, you level up insanely fast. So as you can see, the weapons that I have, these are the Pajali weapons. These are the base weapons that we'll be using. Once you get the 30-30, you'll be able to take these out of the Palace of the Dead. As you can see, this uh, Astrologian has the red ones, and those are actually item level 255. In my introduction to the Palace of the Dead, I said there was like 260, 265, but they're actually 255. I was going to skip the cutscene. I don't want any, anybody to get spoiled. Alright, so some floors might have um, buffs or debuffs. So this one has a blinding debuff added to the floor. There are palmanders that you'll able to use to dis dispel these. So if you can, uh, if you can uh, like, um, tolerate the debuff, go ahead and save it. But if you don't, if it's too uh, hindering, then just you know use whatever palmander it is to uh, dispel it. There's one for blind. There's one that. Uh, oh look, we found a cursed horde by accident. So yeah, if you're um, if you're lucky enough. Stand, if you're lucky enough to stand in a spot and you just happen to have a cursed horde there, you'll automatically be able to get it. So we're kind of got lucky on that. So back to the uh, the, the debuffs. There's uh, one that increases the monster's strength. Um, there's one for bind. There's one for you can't sprint. There's one you can't knock back. Your HP doesn't regain automatically. I think there's one for your HP and MP decrease. Um, uh, oh, for, the, for the buffs, there's like one for haste. Uh, HP and MP increase. 
Uh, I don't really remember the other ones. But those are some of the debuffs and buffs that you guys will find in Palace of the Dead. Also, I want to note that uh, there is a time limit. So, I would uh, recommend uh, uh, hauling ass. <laughs> you don't want to spend too much time in here because you want to go through all this all over again. So, you pretty much want to kill as much enemies as you can because you get more experience when you leave the Palace of the Dead. So, keep that in mind. The Palmander site will reveal traps around the ground. Try not to step on them. They might give you a toad debuff. They might have my lure monsters. They might give you a um, debuffs. Um, or they might explode. So you kind of want to avoid those. Alright, so Palace of the Dead's floor 1 to 10 has Palace Hornets, and I don't think I need to remind you guys how much Final Sting can kill you, so kill these things ASAP. And then the Palmander Steel. Um, there's also another Palmander I'd like to mention um, in my last video. Uh, they have one that turns mobs around you into chickens or toads or whatnot. So if you're uh, overwhelmed by, by, if you step on a lure trap and you're overwhelmed, you quickly pop it. It'll turn everything into a weaker, a weaker, um, um, into a weaker state, and then you'll be able to knock them out a little bit faster. But note that the effect is limited, and if you don't kill it fast enough, they all revert back to their normal selves, and then you're going to be screwed. <laughs> another silver. Arm flickers. Another point for armor. My, my, my arm. Level up. I think I was on level 24 when I entered, so. Arm in another point. You can see there's the trap that I was talking about. I didn't, it wasn't uncovered since we didn't have a site or a safety to eliminate them, so I stepped on an exploding trap. We're at level 7, so we got 3 more to go. And then we get to the last boss. You are allowed to use potions. Um, so if you like soloing, you can just go into your inventory here. And then use your potions. 
or whatever you kind of get. So, you know, since I said in my previous video that food really doesn't work, um, I'm actually kind of tempted to see if it does. Alright, it seems he can use food, but I don't think the uh, experience boost really works. It does seem to work. It seems you can use it. So I might actually, I might have actually been wrong about the food. And actually, food does seem to work, but I don't know if the experience boost actually works though. I mean, I could be just like kind of like cheesing the mechanics, but like I might actually don't think that too many people know that you actually can use food. Well, since it is really is hard to actually see if the food experience buff works, it's kind of it's like cause, because the experience is randomized, so it's really can't really like 100% prove that it does work. But you can seem to get the food benefits though, like the stat increase. Well, technically, I don't think I like stuff like like your strength is determined by the by the weapon you're you're using. So I don't know. Kind of like it's like it's, like, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. It's like does the you know, like does your stats really affect anything? Like does accuracy really affect something in here? Because you're uh, there's a total debuff like. It's like a good. It's like pretty much a good question. It's like, does the stats really matter? I really don't. It's like I really don't think the food really does make a difference. Like your strength. Your strength is determined by your weapon. So it's like I think like vi like your vitality might be might might work with food because vitality is is has nothing has no connection to. Uh, your armor. Because your health is, your health is equal to the, your, is pretty much scales with your level. But I think accuracy and, and HP still goes by whatever your stats are but you know I really don't think your stats really matter in this in Pass of the Dead so I'm still gonna go on, I'm gonna go on a limb and say food still does not work because your, your strength is determined by the weapon you're using your art your defense is, is, is determined by the uh, your armor's level so I'm gonna just go ahead and say the food really does not make a difference you will not miss regardless what your what your accuracy is. So I'm gonna go on a limb and, and say your your the food does not make no difference. All right, so we're at level uh, level ten. Here is the boss, and the boss is the uh, level twenty palace death gaze. Again, there's no positionals needed, so anything and everything will work. So there's not really much to this boss, he'll just do whatever a death gaze do and just avoid him and just uh, take him out. <laughs> and done.
So that is basically Palace of the Dead. So the recap, the food is not worth, food has no influence on anything because your defense and your strength are determined by your weapon and your armor. So I don't think food has any, has any kind of, uh, any influence, but it does has, it says vitality. So if I remove the buff, I wonder if my HP will go down. All right. It does work. So basically, vitality will tr uh, vitality from food will affect your HP. So food does have a purpose in this. It's just if you um, has vitality in it, you will get vitality. And for everything else, I don't think it will aff uh, affect you in any way. So I would just say vitality is probably the only thing that will affect you. All right, so exiting the area with a full inventory may result in a loss of rewards, progress, record progress, and leave the Palace of the Dead. Yes. Skip the cutscene. All right. So, I gained 23,100 experience from floor 1 to 10. So, like I pr previously said in my last video, I don't know if that's all the experience that I gained inside the Palace of the Dead, or is that just a portion of it? So, what I'm probably going to say is it's a portion of the experience I got inside the Palace of the Dead. So, um, as, as like I uh, mentioned earlier, um, the level inside the Palace of the Dead is different from your outside level. So, I was level 14 inside the Palace of the Dead, I think. No, I was level 21 inside Palace of the Dead. But outside of it, I was level 24. So inside, I was level 21. Outside, I was level... And I just turned to level 25. So when I go back into Palace of the Dead, I will continue at level 21. So like I said, it's on a separate leveling system altogether. So if you are level 50 and above, you will get uh, Tombstones of Poetics. Because I am not, I don't get it. So I get a brown trim sack from the Christmas Horde and a thousand gil from completing Palace of the Dead. Again, you have to find the Christmas Hordes to get them. So either you can go continue to the next level or you can exit and continue on with the main story. So pretty much that is the basics of Palace of the Dead. So again, food doesn't really is, has no useful in, in Palace of the Dead except for like vitality. That's pretty much about it. So when you get your crystal horde, you go to the bishop here, and he'll appraise a piece of the horde. So what it will do if you get something rare, the rings around it will glow. If it's something really rare, the inner inner circle, as you see the like little kind of like pentagram there, will light up as it's appraising so if it's something if it's just something common you won't get any kind of all that flashy stuff until the very end so let's see what i got nothing it's just a regular treasure so unfortunately i got a magic tech prism which is just a little spark in the a spark an illusion and that's it so and it's a flop so let's go ahead and just Get rid of it. Hey, a blue star. What do you do? Garbage. So, basically, once you're done, you can go back into the Palace of the Dead. You will continue to have the upgrade to your armor and arms that will carry over to the next dungeon. So, pretty much, just repeat the process, and then you go into the next four, which is going to be 11 to 20. So I'm not going to continue on. So guys, that is pretty much what you will be encountering in Palace of the Dead. Um, each tier will have different mobs. Uh, so be aware. And they will get stronger. The, and the bosses will get stronger. And yeah, hopefully you guys get a group that doesn't suck. Uh, hopefully, if you're lucky enough, you'll get a healer. And if you don't, then we'll Godspeed. <laughs> So guys, that is going to be it for this video. Hope you guys um, found it useful. I definitely, oops, excuse me, definitely would recommend 
doing this um, on all character on all um, jobs, secondary jobs, or if you guys are just bored of the of the grind of the main story, you can go do the Palace of the Dead. It's a great way to level up, and you get some good items in the process, and some guild too. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, favor, and subscribe to my channel for more Final Fantasy XIV videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, may you all walk in the light of Lord Bahamut. Take care, guys. Enjoy.